Yes, this one, this one is going to be a little bit different, and uh, my wife is here with me today, and we are going to be having a lot of fun. I just don't get to see the comments. It's not as fun. Here, here let me help you out. There's oh, a, okay. There's, there's my love. Right there. So. <laughs> oh, now I can see myself. So no one is officially manning the comments tonight, uh, but we'll try and keep an eye on them and answer questions as we go. And we're going to be having a little bit of fun. This is the first in a series where I'm going to be working with my wife and actually uh, teaching her how to use hand tools. Um, it'd be, thought it would be kind of nice to actually go through the basics of the basics and take someone who's never used a plane before and show them how to use it. Uh, so today we're actually going to be looking at hand planes, going through some of the basics, what are some of the differences, how do you set them up, how do you use them, what are you looking for, um, and going into that. Uh, next week we'll probably be looking at hand saws. What are some of those differences? How do you use them? Maybe you can get my wife using the big frame saw. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're going to have a lot of fun here. And I'm sure if you have questions, go ahead and put them on there. And I'll try and keep an eye on it because I'm also going to be manning the camera and, and doing that. They're probably just realizing our height difference for the yes. first time. <laughs> my, my wife's... Yeah, this is, this is something else that's going to be kind of fun because um, the bench is set for me. And so it's set for someone who's six foot one. And even for someone who's six foot one, it's on the high side. I have mine at 38 inches. Um, so it's, it's a little higher than most benches. Um, and so, let's see, that would make it, it would be well, four 10, foot 10, 10, 10, it'd be so 13, 14 inches 15. lower. I mean, just um, 15 inches. Well, by percentage, it should be about a, a foot, in, about 13 inches lower. That would be our height difference. So, yeah, um, the bench is way up there. So it'd be like if I was using a bench up here at my armpits, basically. <laughs> Did they see my stool yet, or is that coming? Oh yeah, I know, the video that came out. And so that's okay. one of the big reasons why I made the step stool, um, which we keep in the laundry room, but then she can use that so in here. Myself. Let's see what the difference is with the, with the step stool. Today. See, now that's... Oh, look, you're eye to eye, huh? Hey, now it's gonna work. <laughs> um, I've grown. Yeah, so before we get into that, um, this week, actually tomorrow, uh, my wife and I and the kids are okay, all heading out. I'm just going to wait till I'm happy to that time. <laughs> uh, we're all heading out to the Midwest Tool Collectors Meet in Iowa, uh, Rapid City, Iowa. And that will be Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Um, we will be there Thursday, Friday, and I think we're going to be leaving Friday night. I don't think we're going to be able to be there Saturday. Um, so you'll be able to come and meet me and my wife and our kids. Um, and we'll be doing a meetup, actually, let's see, this is Thursday, so two days from now. Um, there is, I had it written over here, ah, yes, there's a Starbucks at 4801 First Avenue Northeast in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And we will be there at 5 p.m. on Thursday. Um, and I have the information to that down in the description below. So if you're going to be there, um, feel free to come and hang out. Otherwise, if you're going to be at the meet, then uh, come on every time. <laughs> Um, if any of you have questions, go ahead and put them in there, but put some big notifier like a blue dot or something of that nature so that I can see them and I can pick them out. Um, or if you put like a super chat, those pop up and we're pretty, pretty easy to see. Her arms are shorter, so. yes. <laughs> Did she like the step stool? Yes. It's yes. better than my the stool I was using my Uncle Paul made for me when I was three. Unfortunately, one of the edges broke off and so I almost broken my ankle a couple of times <laughs> so this is a little bit more stable now on the slick floor yeah. hopefully so let's uh let's dive into this um so we're going to be first looking at some of the differences in hand planes and what makes one better than another and is there any particular option you should be looking at when first getting into hand planes okay but i have to say something because i'm probably the only one who knows this because on the stanleys they have sw and i'm sw <laughs> so they're mine. <laughs> do, you, do you know what the, the SW stands for? It's Stanley something, I'm assuming. Uh, well, it's... Um, I, I don't know what the SW actually stands for, Sarah but it's, right? it's known as the, the sweetheart. Well, then yeah. it is mine. <laughs> and everyone knows that my middle initial is A. And we know what A stands for. Yeah, always. Always. <laughs> okay, um, so let's actually look at... Oh, no, I lost signal. Bump the camera, sorry. See if I can get that back. Line. I really got to get a better switcher here someday. I got a bunch of things. I want to get a second microphone so you actually hear Sarah, because right now it's all coming through this microphone. Well, why do you have the microphone? I should have the microphone. Because I'm the one with all the hot air. Well, we know that. So first, <laughs> let's actually look at the difference between a low angle plane 
and a high angle plane. Um, and you often hear this called as a low angle jack, and this is a traditional Bailey pattern plane. Um, basically, the big difference is that the bevel on this, let me grab a chisel to explain it. The bevel is this angle here on the surface. You have a flat side and you have your bevel. With a traditional plane, the bevel is down, which seems kind of counterintuitive. Why would you want to push a chisel through the, uh, through the wood with the bevel down? Whereas this one, the bevel is up, and so this allows the angle of attack to lower way down. Uh, but the difference is that this is at 45 degrees, and with the bed and the bevel, uh, this is at 38 degrees. So it's not a huge amount of difference. 30, 12, 24, yeah, 38 degrees. Um, so there's really not a huge difference between the two, and bevel angle is a little bit lower. Um, but having this lower means that this is easier to push through the wood. It has uh, less friction because the, the blade is in line with the wood and pushes through it. Whereas this, as it goes through the wood, tends to bounce and chatter as it goes through the wood if the bed is not strong holding it. And that's one of the big things that makes a good plane over a bad plane is that uh, the bed needs to be strong enough so that it's not going to be vibrating as it cuts. Um, but that being said, traditionally, the low angle plane was rarely ever used. It was designed for um, butcher blocks or other end grain uh, for cutting off on large surfaces, and it was rarely used for anything other than that. But nowadays, a lot of new people like this because it's easier to set up. There's less bells and whistles on it. There are less things to go wrong. There's less things to adjust, and it's easier to push through the wood. Um, there's also a, a slightly easier flexibility because of this. You can fairly quickly switch out the iron, and you can actually put in different degree irons for different types of woodworking. Whereas with this, um, you're stuck with whatever angle is on that plane. Um, that being said, is one better than the other? No. Different types for different people. Um, some people really like the flexibility of the low angle, having one plane with a bunch of different irons. Uh, the problem with it is, uh, when you really get into figured woods, this starts to have some issues, whereas the higher angle on this really works well for better uh, on figured woods. It's a little easier to set up, or it's, it has more possibilities to set up. It's harder to set up because it has more possibilities you can adjust. Making sense? Yes, I, for a moment I forgot I was supposed to be listening because I was reading the comments because that's usually my job. But yes, <laughs> that makes sense. Bevel up, bevel down. Plates can come out. This doesn't come out. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, so uh, let me just kind of go through the differences tearing these down and showing you what they come up with. With the low angle, really the only thing you have is you have your cap iron. That's what goes on top, or lever cap, different things for it. You have your iron, and then this one, there's a Norris adjuster. And so this allows you to adjust. You can turn this knob to push the iron forward, which will actually make it cut deeper or cut shallower. Or you can move it side to side, and that will actually pivot the iron so that you cut deeper on one side or cut deeper on the other side. Does that make sense? Cool. Uh, so it's really simple. That's about all the parts. The only other thing on this is that the, the mouth on this can actually open up and close. Um, Yes, exactly. And that it helps you with your figured woods. On this, the, the mouth on the bottom um, can actually, this whole plate can slide forward and backward to close up the mouth in front of the iron. So you can see how there's a really tight little gap between the, the front nose here and the iron. And the tighter you make that, the cleaner your cuts are going to be, the less problems you have with the figured woods. But the bigger it is, the less chance you're going to have with stuff clogging in there. And one of the kids is probably going to pop in here in a moment. Uh, but that's really all there is to a low angle plane. So for someone beginning, this is great because there isn't that much to learn. Um, it goes through and you want to adjust it, you have this one knob that moves everything. Then we get into a traditional Bailey pattern. And this has a bunch of different things. It's got the lever cap. It's got a chip breaker and an iron all together with a screw. Okay, back up. Chip breaker? Yes. That's breaker or raker? Breaker. Okay. Because it breaks the chips. Although you'll have some people say, no, it doesn't break the chips. Well, actually, if you get down close enough, yes, it does break the chips. Um, and so whenever you pull this off, you actually want to pull this back, turn it 90 degrees, and then that will pull it out. The reason you don't want to you don't want to push it forward because if this slides forward, it's going to hit the very edge and ding up the edge of your iron. So you have your chip breaker, your iron, and then you get into this. This piece that the iron sits on is called the frog. Because why not? 
exactly. Uh, then you have your lateral adjuster. So just like with the Norris moving the knob side to side, this will move the iron side to side. So you can put one corner in farther than the other, or you can balance it out so it's cutting nice and clean all the way across. And then under here, you have your depth adjuster. And so this actually moves this little yoke back underneath here, which moves this rod, which then connects to the chip breaker. And the chip breaker then moves in and out. And as the chip breaker moves in and out, it's attached to the iron. So then the iron actually moves in and out. So it's a little bit complicated, especially in comparison to a low angle. And then on some of the, the newer ones, there's actually another screw back in here that allows you to adjust the frog in and out. Um, but most of the time, you're not going to mess with that. Um, it's just that is how you actually, on this one, you can't close up the mouth on it because this is all one piece. So you actually move the frog in and out to move the iron closer to the front of the mouth. So it gets a little more complicated. Um, but with the complication, you have more options. Um, any suggestions on what to look for when buying older planes? I'm actually going to be doing a video here soon on that. Um, actually, I'm going to be doing an entire uh, series with the hand tool school here soon, doing a semester with them. We're we'll going into great detail on that. Um, and I do have a video talking through um, some of the basics on that, so if you want to look that up. But basically, you're looking for one that has all the parts that it, need, that it needs um, and isn't too rusted. Um, so, oh, yeah. Apparently, you said Rapid City, Iowa, and you, we meant Cedar Rapids earlier. Cedar Rapids, not Rapid City. Um, so. Show. Let's actually go through some of the adjustment here, and I'll show oh, you what I'd like to do this. on this. Okay. Yes. I know, you actually got to do something now. Oh. <laughs> so when you were setting up a plane, I just clipped it all back together, and it's sitting in here. We need to actually go through this and figure out, we need to figure out several things. Number one, it's depth of cut. How far is the iron sticking out? In this case, if you feel it, and the, the iron's sharp, but you can feel it and, and see that the blade is sticking out. Um, yes. Some people actually like to eyeball down it, so you can see it coming out. Um, but some people can and can't see that. I think that is actually a little bit harder than just sticking your finger on there, being careful, but you can actually feel the iron um, and where it is sticking out on one side or the other. And in this case, I'm feeling it very heavy. It's sticking out a long ways. So I'm gonna back this up. Oop, by the way. Okay, so you're saying it's heavy, so you're saying it's cutting too it's, deep? Yeah, it's sticking out too far, okay. and that means it's gonna be taking too big of a cut. And okay. you always, when you're first getting started, the, the amount of cut you need is so tiny compared to what you think. And so I'm going to actually set it close to where it needs to be so you can feel. Okay, here, feel that. It, it feels like basically nothing is sticking out, but that's actually a really heavy cut. <laughs> um, and the more you get used to it, the more you'll be able to feel it's just, it's a, it's a tiny amount. Right now it's sticking out like, mm, what, five thousandths, maybe six thousandths of an inch? Um, so that's a, that's a relatively heavy cut. The next thing we want to do is adjust it side to side. So this lateral adjuster, if I move this over here, if I move it all the way over, move it. Is, sorry, I gotta get the camera here. I'm actually shooting over on the side, aren't I? Sorry about that. Um, waiting for that to come back. Cool. So if I move this lateral adjuster all the way over here to this side, that's going to force this iron this way. So if it's wait, on this wait, side, wait. it's going to force it this way. So it goes the way. So it goes opposite. No. Well, what happens is if, here, you can actually see it slide side to side like that. See how that works? Yeah, but it's cutting now. It's cutting the direction this is going. Well, no, this now is... this side is down. So this corner of the iron here is down on this side. Okay. Um, so if, it's on, if the, the lever is on this side, this side is cutting deeper. The opposite side is cutting deeper. So the, level, the side that it's on is the side that's cutting lightly. And so we're going to move it back to the middle. And a lot of people weren't worry that their lateral adjuster isn't in the middle of the plane and rarely is it ever actually in the middle of the plane. What you're looking for is putting your finger under there and feeling, here I gotta back it out a little bit more now, and you want to feel, whoop, wrong way, which side is it actually sticking out a little bit more on? Here, and can you feel that and tell me which side it's sticking out on? Yep. Ooh, we got one right. And then the amount of movement, um, you move it towards the side it's sticking out. So if it's sticking out heavy on this side, we're going to move the lateral adjuster towards the side that's moving out. I'm just going to move it eh, a hair. It's like an eighth of an inch, if that. That was probably too much. Yep, that was a bit too much. I'm going to move it back just a little bit. And I'm just putting a tiny bit of pressure on there. 
I mean, you can barely even see it actually moving until we get where we want to be. And then I'm going to adjust the blade just a hair. Cool. So that one's set up. Um, and we'll actually go through a little bit finer detail on setting it up here in a moment with a board. Um, I'm just making sure there's any questions. Oh, I think we got them. So, cool. Um, so on this one, it's very similar in what all you need to do, except for it's all with this one lever. Now, some people actually like to loosen up the cap iron just a little bit. It makes this easier to advance. And then when you want to cut it deeper, you turn it clockwise, and it slowly cranks this thing in. The problem with the Norris adjusters is that you've got to move them a lot to get a little bit of movement, which is nice for a beginner because you think you need to move a lot. Um, and so you can kind of play with that. And then the same thing, it's the exact same movement. If I push this side in, it moves it that way, which puts this corner down and farther. So the side the lever is moved towards will give you the lighter side, the side it's cutting lighter on. Um, but there's less movement in this. You can just see there's, there's just that little bit of movement because everything's captured a little bit tighter. So there's less chance for something to go wonko. I'm just going to balance this a little bit. And then lock this down. Um, I usually I just keep this locked and force it. it just, it's harder. So my thumb and finger are strong enough to actually do it. If you don't have the strength to do it, then loosen this up a little bit. So that's about it for setup. Um, if anyone has any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat. Do you have any questions? Um, let me actually let you do some of the detail setup. And so we're going to grab some simple pine. Uh, why don't you bring the stool around over here? And I'm going to move the camera a bit. So Do you I can actually. Oh, uh, yeah, right over here. Back this up a little bit. What's that? <laughs> Sorry, babe. There. Okay, so um, when planing. Oh, I got the other side. What we want to do is start it with nothing coming out. And you can see how it's, what's that? Nothing. You can see how it has a little bit coming out, but basically nothing is, is cutting. It means that the blade is retracted far enough that it's not going to be doing anything. And then what we want to actually do is advance the blade just a little bit. The Norris adjuster, it's actually a good bit, until we actually get a good curl. And so I'm just going to keep going at it until I start to get a curl like that. The next thing I want to do is actually move it from side to side. So I'm going to move the plane on this side of the board, and then I'm going to move the plane over onto the other side of the board. So I get to test one side of the iron and then the other side. Does that make sense? Um, and on this side, I'm getting a decent curl. And on this side... You should have called this boot camp. Right I'm not getting much of any mm -hmm. curl at all. Yes, I see that. Um, so that means that this side of the iron is down too far, cutting too deep, and this side isn't cutting much at all. So I want to move the lever cap toward the lever adjuster towards yeah the, towards the side that's a little heavy on, and just a little bit of movement. Here. Except for this one's tight, so I can actually put some force into it. Wow, I got to loosen that up. Oop, too much. Oh, I see strikeies. Ah, I'll get some questions here in a moment. No signal. Oh, oops, sorry. See? Bumping cable. I still have to do the job. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's what happens. It's been going for a while. There's several months in this. <laughs> okay. So there, yeah, I got the cable over here. I'm bumping. You see how we're getting a similar shaving on both sides. Light, wispy shavings. On that side. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually pinching the nose of the plane. So you can see it like that. And I'm using my finger as a guide so my finger can keep it on this side or I can push it over and it can keep it on this side and just let it slide up against my finger. Oop. Jumped. So here, I will back it off and let you try it and see what your thoughts are. Back a little bit. <laughs> there. Alrighty. Because I want to see how this goes with someone else not not, have done, not having done it before. So okay, if you... Hang on. I got nothing! Okay. Am I... 
Am I not pushing down hard enough? Is that the... No, it just means you have to, I, I backed it off. Oh. So I, I put it all back to the original thing. So you have to set it up again. Oh, you didn't tell me that. Oh, sorry. Oop, got to change the computer. <laughs> yeah, that's just for us. Because no one's actually touching the computer. What? Growling at you. <laughs> to know you changed. Okay, now I have to think about this. Okay. So we need. To... Oh. Hang on. Well, let me read the comments while you do that then. No signal. Need a double happy dance. Yes. Sorry, Darth Thweeb. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I actually I have a number two plane right here. We're gonna let her try in a minute, um, but yeah. So <laughs> what? I tried to push and it didn't go anywhere. Do you advance the iron? I think I might have advanced it too much. Oh my gosh! Oh, it's little tiny. Yeah, it's a thick curl. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, so you might want to back it up a little bit because you're probably taking like ten thousandth of an inch cut, which you can do, but you got to put a good bit of force behind it. Um, and uh, that's I think that's one of the the biggest new person um, problems is that they think they have to put a lot of force into the plane to make it move, and it's usually a problem that you're trying to take too heavy of a cut. So let me actually see. Here. I feel jumpy. You look better than Jumpy. Yeah, let me just try something. Okay, yeah, that's way too heavy of a cut. Uh, so, yeah, we need to... Oh, that's the other thing. Um, what happens is you cut it too deep. And let me flip over to this. So you can see this. Um, I have a very tight mouth. <laughs> no signal. Ah, and fix it. I really need to get a new cable for that. I should get double play um, tonight. What I have on here is I, ca I have a very, very tight mouth on here. Yeah. And when you advance the iron farther, it closed up that mouth completely. Ah. So now nothing's getting through there. So I, what I could do is open up the mouth on this, and this one I actually loosen the knob. And we're just going to go ahead and do that because we don't have to worry about this. And I can push this sideways. Oops, wrong, wrong direction. I can push it this way, and that'll open up the mouth. Now you have a big, huge open mouth here in front of the iron. See that? So now, even though it's taking a big cut, it'll cut it. Here, try that. <laughs> Little stool. Maybe we should make a bigger stool. So now try backing it off and try and get your, your shaving as thin as you can. Okay, so I just want to turn this then. Yeah, you want to turn it counterclockwise to back it off. But your fingers, you may need to loosen up the lever cap. Or maybe not. That oh, might yeah. be enough right there. See how it's easier to push now? Yeah. Nope, nope. Stop being jumpy. Oh, let me show you actually what is that, what's happening here is it's jumping, you'll see some points where it's catching here, and it's not catching here, and it's catching here. And what's happened is because it was jumpy before, it's now you have spots where it has cut to this point, and then it hasn't cut here, and it's cut to this point, and so you're actually coming through places where the sole of the plane is riding over the valleys, and the iron isn't catching on anything. So you have to take one clean cut, even though that clean cut's gonna jump around. And then your next pass will be a little bit better. And then your next pass should be a nice clean one. Okay, hang on. I feel like, because you don't normally do it like this. You normally do it like this. Yes. You want to actually be behind the plane a little bit. Stop. You're in my store. <laughs> yeah. Now, here's another thing that you're doing. I know I got to get a new cable, don't I? Uh, is that the plane is actually you're, you're naturally tipping the plane this way on the board, and so you're ta you're taking a heavier shaving on one side than the other. Let me see if that's because you now the iron's sticking out about the same amount on both sides. But what's happening is as you're pushing it, rather than pushing straight down, which if the iron is sharp, you really don't need any pressure pushing down. Mm -hmm. You just need to be 
letting the weight of the plane do. Your force is actually pushing a little bit of an angle like that, and so you're actually tipping the plane a little bit. Okay. So you want to think about pulling it back just a little bit. Think about putting more pressure on this side of the board than this side of the board. Not tipping it, just putting more pressure, just like that. That is exactly what you want to do. Because what you, what you actually do now is the top of the board actually is crowned, because you took some off this side and some off this side. So next time you're going through and take that crown off, and so you'll have two or three passes where it's not going to take anything but that middle section. See how that works? Learning to plane square is difficult. <laughs> it makes you grab a square. See, this is one of the things that I wanted to learn is because all of my experience has been uh, has been teaching myself. And so this is kind of a good opportunity to then come through and see what problems does someone new have that I've never experienced before or that I haven't experienced for years. James, with my granddaughter, I can see her blocks halfway down my bench so she can walk. Oh, yeah, that's a cool idea. Um, set up uh, blocks on the bench so that they can walk along with it. Um, I need to do that. Uh, let me think. Okay, let me try actually using a number four. Um, so rather than using this one, and one of the problems that it's like you're having, I've gotten to the point where here, let me show you that. But you said most people don't use this one, correct? Um, no, actually a lot of beginners like this. Oh. Um, but that tends to be because most woodworkers are my size. I was going to say, because this is a This is a heavy, heavy plane for you. <laughs> um, and so like for me, I can now do it like this and get a fairly nice curl just because I, I know how to eyeball it. And so I can, I can feel that, but that's not something you're gonna know until you, you've spent some time doing it. Um, so I'm gonna give you is a number four. So this is a Bailey pattern plane. It's a higher angle. Um, it's gonna feel very differently. It's gonna sound very differently. And because the, the, bevel, is, uh, because the bevel is down, you actually tend to get um, a, more of a zip sound to it. And so when the blade is nice and sharp, it goes zzzz through the wood. And if it's dull, it kind of crunches through the wood. Um, so. Hear that higher pitch? Mm -hmm. And that lets you know it's ready to go. Um, here, let me actually show you one other thing that might help you. Is to put your fingers alongside the blade. See how mine are actually hanging underneath it? So what I'll do is I'll hold it like this. And I'll pinch the front. And then on this side, I might actually let my pinky slide underneath. And I'm, I'm not actually grabbing the tote. I'm just holding it in my hand like that. Let my pinky sit here. And then I'll let it slide between my finger and that pinky. And what that'll end up doing is giving me those stops. And I, my fingers then, because they're running on the side, they let me know if I'm tipping one way or the other. I can actually feel the gap underneath. Does that make sense? Here, see how that feels to you. So I'll pinch the front. Can I tell you something? What's that? Take a breath when you talk. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs you used to talking on video. Yeah, see, because you're holding it up here, you're putting, you're able to have far more lateral force on it sideways. Yeah. Whereas if you pinch it down on the the bridge here, yeah, and let your finger slide along like that. That'll keep it more level. Now you just have because on this, um, it wasn't quite having enough pressure down. No, it's because I feel like I should be yeah. like this. And it's a high bench for you. <laughs> so I think that's why I want to do this, because otherwise I feel uh -huh. like I'm not. Yeah, and another problem that you'll come across is now that you've made these ridges from bouncing, those ridges will just create more ridges, and yeah. then those ridges will create more ridges. So you're trying to get one complete clean curl. Sarah, don't feel too bad. Okay. Yes, my wife is six. My wife is five foot one. The struggle is real. Hey, at least she's over five foot. That, that's only three more inches than me. But... Yeah, I, I could teach you Japanese woodworking so we can just do it on the floor. That way height doesn't matter. Now, let me clean it up. One clean pass for you. I can see why people like that one more. You know, it's heavier. I felt like I have more control with that one. Mm -hmm.
Well, it's, it's lower, and so the lower angle actually makes it less chance to tip one way or the other. There's, there's less high force where this, where this your, your hand, if it's on the knob, is up even higher, and it's just a different feel. Um, but I guess I want to go... I naturally would think I would want to go Ooh, now let me bring in a wood grain. Um, and wood grain, here, let me try this. Here. Now I'm getting these wisps that are tiny. Here, let me just tighten this up just a hair. Give this a try while I talk about wood grain. There you go. That's a really, really, really light cut. Now with wood grain, this is one of the biggest challenges that most new woodworkers have when they come to hand tools. Um, because if you've worked with power tools in the past, wood grain matters, but it doesn't matter that much with power tools. With, you know, with power tools, you can run a board through a planer and it will plane it down. You're going to get more tear out one direction than the other, but who really cares? You're going to sand it out. Whereas with a plane, you have to be very careful about wood grain. And, and this board, um, I don't know if you can see it in the video. Let me see if I can move this around so that the light doesn't get it. Maybe something like that. All the grain is actually running uphill like this. So you can see all the lines in this, how they're kind of running up like that. Yeah. Um, and so what you're going to want to do is if the lines are really close to running parallel with the board, if you actually eyeball down the board, it becomes very obvious to see which way the grain is running. You see what I'm talking about? Am I looking on this side or this side? But down the, the face of the board. I can't see. It's too high for me. And you can see all the lines then run off this way. Yeah. That lets you know that this is uphill and this is downhill. And you always want to plane from downhill towards uphill. The reason being is that you have all these fibers in the board. You have all these fibers in the board that are running up like this. Well, if you plane this way, the iron is going to get underneath those fibers, rip them out, and tear out underneath it. Whereas if you plane this way, you'll actually be shearing them all off, just like cutting grass. Um, and so that's why I have this board turned this way, is because all the fibers are running uphill this way. So you're planing uphill. I know, but I just... It, I... But with simple pine like this, you can actually turn it around and try it the other way. Let's see if there's any question. Let her try the number two. She can't control the number four, yes. Um, well, that's one of the things I actually wanted to bring up here. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing people are suggesting. Yes, well, here, feel the number two. <laughs> the number two uh, would feel much better to her and would actually be a nice one, except for my number two has a problem. And this would be something good when you're looking at tools. Let's see if you can see it here. Um, if I put this on my flat bench, I don't know if the video picks it up, but there's a little bit of rock in here. Do you see that? It's wonky. The sole of this is completely twisted. And see what? Someone brazed it, and they did a fairly good job of it. Um, but at some point, this end of the mouth has pulled up. And so this is really nice and sharp. Here, give it a try. Feel what it feels like. It's nice and sharp. It's tuned up. It's exactly what it needs to be. <laughs> but because it's twisted, you're putting all the pressure up here, so it's actually lifting the blade out. If you put the pressure on the back, it'll catch. Or, I don't know if I advanced there. I think it's not advanced enough, because it looks like a very wide gap. Oh no, I didn't advance the iron at all. And so this one will bounce all over the place because the sole is not flat. And you don't really need a dead flat, perfectly smooth sole to make a decent hand plane. Uh, what you need is one that is really close to flat. And unless you're looking at getting a, you know, a joint or one of your, your big hand planes, the, the flatness is eh, not terribly important. But in this case, because the sole is so out of flat, you can put it on a flat surface like this and you can feel it rocking back and forth. Uh, that's just too far. Of course, if I put this one on, I mean, there's, oops, I put a chip underneath. There, there's no movement side to side underneath this thing when I move it around. It's, it's flat. Now, is this sole dead flat? No, not quite. It's probably off by a half a thousandth from corner to corner, um, but it's close enough for what we need. So that's why I, I, I really want to flatten this out and spend the time on it, but it's going to take me uh, probably four or five hours to actually flatten this sole out. Once I do, it'll be nice for you. Um, I'm a little wonky anyways. It's okay. Yeah. So is that the grain direction making sense for you? Yes. Um, 
Well, here, let me, let me give you this board, and this one will let you feel the difference in grain direction. And here's some of the sounds difference. So let's start with going with the grain. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay. You gotta stop. I'm right. not gonna learn if you're constantly telling me how to do it. Okay. Because, okay. <laughs> so, face. Yes. Well, you have... <clears throat> or do I want it on this side? What do you mean? Does it matter which side I'm looking at? No, theoretically, the grain should all be going in the same direction. Okay. So if it's going uphill on this side, it's going uphill on the other side as well. So that's uphill. Correct, because it's yeah. curving. Yeah, so all the grain way. is coming this direction. So then I want it, but then I'd want to go this way, wouldn't I? Because wouldn't that be? No, because then you'd be going into the fibers. Oh, because I want to go uphill. Never yeah, mind. you want to slice the fibers off. Got it. See, I had to think. About <laughs> yeah, it's not something that comes natural until you've done it for a while. And now I've like, done it long enough. Give me an IV like... and. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which C one do you want to try? I mean, you know, I can have all my old lingo too. <laughs> okay, so what am I trying now? How can I convince my wife to come out to the shop with me? Bribery? Crap, <laughs> crap. Chocolates. Works. So, which one do you like? Which one do which I one like? Which one do you want to try? don't know. Here, use the number four again. Actually, you take your wife on a very nice vacation and tell her she's pretty and... Like Ragnar? Oh my gosh. Just so you guys know, we came... I put my medal on. I was going to put my medal <laughs> on. <laughs> we came back um, from Ragnar. I'm trying to figure out why it's bouncing on you like that. Because it's me. Well, she just did an ultra run this weekend, um, and so she ran an ultra Ragnar, 31 miles. Um, run, you're so generous. <laughs> it was not pretty, let me tell you that much. Although, it was funny when all the gazelle-looking guys are like, I couldn't do that, and I'm like, yeah, you could. Anyways, okay, I don't um, know why it's jumpy. I want to figure this out first before we go any further. Make sure it's nothing... I know I just meant I was putting it down so you could talk. I know, I'm going to clean this up. Oop. Face was not all the way. Did you tighten it or did I tighten it? I tightened that. Oh, that's why. Okay. Um, I Nor think would you normally be planning towards yourself, correct? I think what's happening is when you're pushing on it, this hand is pushing forward, uh -huh. which actually causes the plane to rock forward. And so this hand is pushing down, trying to put all your so downforce on. I'm tilting it too much. What you want to actually be doing is putting your downforce on this. There's a reason that the pommel is gripped is forward. You actually want to be forcing this down, and you want your down pressure to be back here on the back of this hole, not on the front. Okay, but can I show you my grip? <laughs> you let them see. <laughs> can you see my grip on this thing? <laughs> it is very hard. Oh, here. Um, when normally gripping a, 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 a plane or a saw, three fingers go in, one goes out. But that's going to even be worse for you. <laughs> Here, see how that feels on this one. Three, yeah. See, that's the right size for you. That's exactly the size handle you need. I should get you a set of number twos. <laughs> we'll try it. <laughs> try it again. Hey, there you go. Look at that. It's a little different when you tell me to push down here. It just, yeah, a smaller handle would be yeah. better. His and hers. <laughs> I'll get a pink Stanley yet. Doesn't have to be pink. Okay, I keep running into your other oh. vice thingy. My vice? <laughs> With the, the twisty thingy. Okay, let me try one other thing first. Make sure that I'm thinking about this right. I'm going to try it without putting any downforce on it. I'm just having to put a little bit there. I think you're trying to put too much downforce, actually. Because what you should be able to do is just have a little bit of downforce on it. And it should just grab. Actually, Paul Sellers has a really good video on that. I'm running out of stool. 
Try number three. Um, I would, but my number three is also has problems right now. Actually, my number. Th actually, I may have fixed my number three. Let me see. I don't remember if I worked on it. It's been a while since I've used my number three. Actually, let me give you my number three. Thank you for that tip, Russ Staples. He's looking out for me. Uh oh. Uh oh. Can you run over and move the mouse? Hang on. There we go. Yes, you guys can see us, but we can't see anything because my computer keeps timing out and I forgot to change the timeout on. No, my light's not over there. There you go. All right. So number three is ready for you. A, a number three has a very similar handle, but it's ever so slightly smaller than the number four. Okay, so this is the three? Yes, yeah, so and the number three is also thinner, so you can see there. You can't um, see me. Oh no, it's bounced out again. Yeah. We're fixing it. I need to have my wife at the uh, at the controls more often. There we go. Yep. Okay, so let's try this again. Okay, Stanley, number three. Hang on. <laughs> My stool. You need to put like um, non skid footies on it. Rubber feet on it? Yeah. Okay. I've tried. Because I'm trying to push down here, but I feel like then it then it doesn't want to. I think. <laughs> I'm try and grab it lower. Because um, I, like I think what's here? no, I, I think what's happening is because your hand is small on here, your hand is sliding up into the horn. Yeah. Whereas if you can try and keep it down here and I push know, it at this spot. I know. That's what I'm trying to do. But I just the other problem is every time I push forward, my stool pushes back. <laughs> every action is an opposite and equal reaction. Okay, let me try something without the stool. Okay. See if that. I'm not really feeling like a midget. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> I... <laughs> and I really can't, let me see if I can lighten the cut up a little bit more. I don't know if I can and it still grabs something. I'm still twisting with my sandals because they're very not appropriate shop shoes. Oh, you have your flip flops on? Oh. That's what I'm saying. It's not helpful. Let me see if I can lighten the cup. Because I don't have clogs. Someone hasn't made me any. Yeah, see that's about as light as this one will go. Let me just clean this up. There, give that a try. So we're kind of experimenting here and trying to find out how I can teach you that. Shorter bard might help as well to start with. That was pretty good. Okay, you wearing sandals was not a nice choice. Yeah, try not holding the knob. Um, so like hold the, the edge here, don't hold the knob. I feel uh, like, like I'm gonna hurt myself though. Yeah, for like some that. Reason. Wrong camera, that's why. I need to widen my stance, maybe. Well, there's my problem. Oh, jeez. <laughs> no, that's not an excuse for you to get new plans. Now that you've been playing with that one for a while, let me try this. Let the weight of the plane do the work for you. Back that off right there. Here, 
give that one a try. I think you might actually be running into the vibration of the bevel. You're still getting some vibration from the low angle. <laughs> but not as bad. And that's um, another reason why a lot of people like the low angle is it does push easier. See, when you start the cut, you want to have all your pressure here on the toe because there's nothing back here supporting it. So you start it there, and then once you come in here and your hand, your, your tote is on the wood, then your pressure is back here. Does that make sense? So as you're, as you're going, you'll be putting pressure up here. I can start it with just the one, and then as I get into it, I could complete it, but then I can put a little bit of pressure back here and get that cut. I tilted too much on that one. A little bit, but ended up with a nice curl. Okay, there. so I was thinking about the whole like how to get your wife in the shop thing. I figured it out. Okay, not necessarily for every wife. Clean the house. <laughs> Take away her excuse. Or do the dishes or whatever she doesn't like to do. That. I think you're still pushing down too much in the front. But don't don't ever tell your wife what to do. <laughs> it's it's not a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Do not have anti-glare pants on. <laughs> Stop it. Yes, uh, her reach is being overextended, but that's partially because she's standing on a stool that's that wide. There, now you're starting to get it. Is that feeling a little easier now? Yeah, I wish I had another, like, another step. My stool. I know, I need to make a stool that's like three foot long. So you can actually walk along. So if you want to know what it's like for a child, because I stopped growing when I was 10, here you go. Yes, maybe I should just bring over the kids' bench, because I did make the kids' bench. It's actually not a bad idea. I might try that for next week. Except for next week, it's going to be sawing. That's much easier. Um, so he says. Yeah. But here, let me show you what something feels like. All right, so wait, what kind of wood is this? This is uh, walnut. So this is a hard... Yes, it's a decision you tree. So I smell everything. I, well, it's walnut. You have to smell walnut. It's part of the. I have to smell walnut. Because it smells hey. like walnut. Am I supposed to smell walnut, people? <laughs> I'm not gonna smell it compared to pine. See now what not I smell. See walnut has a good smell. So do roses. <laughs> All right, so let's listen to the sound difference between with the grain. has a bit of a high pitch zip to it and against the grain oh, it goes a little duller and also if you look at the chips you're not gonna be able to see it on here but you'll see like this almost like fish scales on it do you see what I'm talking about um, and you can see it here where it's been tearing out uh, you'll see on the wood where you will suddenly get all this tear out because you're going against the grain so all those fibers that are sticking up are then getting cut and, and ripped out. So you're getting that in there. Um, so yeah, this is kind of an experiment for you and for me in so, okay, teaching. What's, what's the big thing? Uh, okay, yeah, I haven't talked about plain types. So let's actually get into that a little bit here. Should I um, go over there now? No, well, yeah, if you want to. Switch this around. Uh, right to there. So um, not plain types, but plain sizes. So then you have. You know, you have your little number two, you have your number three, your number four, um, your five. Well, this is actually a, a 62, but uh, the, the, it's about the length of a five. What? I'm sorry, I just saw some Yes, the embrace comments. the small walnuts. No, no, others. <laughs> There's a three-letter word in there that I was not expecting to see. Do you see it? What? Uh, yes. <laughs> We went from a G-rated channel, <laughs> and I don't know the backstory, so I'm, I have to go back into the comments, but anyways. Now, so one of the questions is, what size plane do you choose? Because, I mean, you have your, 
two, three, four. This is about the size of a five. A five is the same bevel angle, but and then you also have your six and your seven and your eight. And so they get bigger and bigger. What do they do in difference? Um, take and, off more wood? No, they don't take off any more wood particularly. They, they, they can work on a wider board, but the, the bigger difference is the length of the sole. The longer the sole is, uh, the more you can trust the entire board is flat. Uh, because if I'm planning along here, and if I have a board that is wavy, and so I have a high spot here and a high spot here, if I use this plane, it'll hit that first high spot. It won't hit anything in the middle because it's sitting on both those high spots, mm -hmm. and it'll hit the second high spot. So it won't hit that low spot, so you're not going to be, you'll actually end up flattening out the board because it'll just you hit the high spots. So much. Whereas if I come in with a small plane, it's going to ride up and down those hills and valleys. And so this won't flatten it, it'll just take off a thin amount of material all the way across. And so usually when woodworking, uh, you start with a number five with a scrub plane or a four plane, and that's one with a big mouth, a huge iron on it, and this takes off a lot of material very quickly, just gets it down to thickness. Okay, I'm sorry, I, I have to read comments again. Let's go back to this one. <laughs> <laughs> a scrub plane or a four plane, it's got a big okay, mouth on it. I've heard you talk about scrub planes. Uh, it's got this. That, that, that's like the one you use first. Yes. That's okay. the, uh, the also known as a four plane because it comes before all the other planes. Um, and this takes off a lot of material a lot of quick, really, really quickly. Then you come in with a regular number five or a number four and you bring it down in a shape, you bring it close to where you want it. And then you'll bring in your big guns, your seven or your eight, and flatten out the board. Um, particularly when edge jointing a board, you'll use your seven or eight to get a nice flat edge all the way across. Then once that's done, then you'll come in with your little number two, three, or sometimes a four, and you'll actually smooth it out. And you'll set this up perfectly so it has the finest, smoothest, tightest, beautiful shavings. And with that, then you can go against the grain or on figured woods, and you can really get your clean, finished surface because you don't care about it. This has already made it flat, and you're taking off so little with that last one that this can then glide over the wood. Um, and so you use this for your finishing surface, and your finishing surface might be a little bit undulating, but not enough you could even feel. Whereas this will tell you it's flat. Now, do you need all these planes? No. Um, if you want to, you could do it all with a number four or a number five, um, and you can, you can go through it. And so I could set this up for a really rough cut and do my first couple cuts, um, and then I can use it as a, uh, a flattening plane. Um, I just have to use some other stick or straight edge to tell me if the board is flat. Um, I just can't trust the plane to tell me it's flat. So if I have a high spot and a high spot, I have to mark those high spots, and then I hit this high spot, and I don't hit the middle spot, and then I hit this high spot. Um, and so I just have to let the other tools tell me what's flat. And then I can come back through it and adjust it again to give me my fine finished shavings. Is that making sense? Kind of, yeah. <laughs> so we've kind of rattled through this. Um, Was that it? I want to try the eight. Oh, you want to try the eight? Okay, well, let's they go. They want, you know they want to try the eight. <laughs> She's going to try the number eight. Guns. Here, have you picked up the number eight yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> let's see if she can pick up the number eight. Oh, come on. Pick it up. <laughs> I roll 300 pound patients. Now with the number eight, it's actually probably going to be even easier for you because the eight has enough weight that it weight, holds itself yeah. down. You're just, you don't worry about anything on that. You're just pushing it. Okay, now, hang on now. I want to make sure that there's actually like going to cut things. Okay. I think I set that one up earlier. I think you did. Yeah, and this one definitely pinch it. Don't hold the handle. On a number eight, the handle is almost worth. The, the knob on the front is almost worthless. Um, almost always pinch the front uh, because you, the number eight, number seven, you're usually jointing wood, um, and so it's very important to keep it at 90 degrees when jointing. Um, and so having the finger on the side really does make that a lot easier. So after the beginner course, will Sarah be doing a wood by right three? I don't know what you're talking about. Yes. Oh, like a third channel? Sarah, oh, wood by Sarah. Always right. <laughs> Amen. So after this, you're going to be using the number eight for everything. Well, it definitely has a little bit more stability. Mm -hmm. Let's see, I'm not doing your happy little wood girls. <laughs> I'm not Bob Ross enough.
end it off here. Let me end it off with. I think this one is tuned up. I thank you for the good idea. B power. This is a spoke shape. Let me see if it's actually clean. Oh, up. he usually looks out for me. No, that's about as dull as can be. Well, of course. Let me try this one because you can never have enough All spoke right, shapes. What's the rocking horse thing? Looking thing. Rocking horse. Oh, that is a compass plane. I have a video on that as well. The compass plane actually allows you to cut a curve into the board. I don't need a compass plane for that. I can do it on my own. Yeah, this one's a little dull, but you might have fun with it. Here. But I'm going to be going against the green if I go right there, aren't I? Yeah. Here, give it a try. Well, you may actually try pushing it, or try pulling it and see how it goes. <laughs> but I'm going against the grain. Oh, uh, it's also on the dull side. Um, okay, but pulling it really would be sharp easier either. if you had it sharp. Because I'm actually then able to control yeah. it. But a spoke shave is kind of like a smoothing plane because it has no sole, so it will it has no sole. So it can go through any undulation. So if you have a really wavy board, um, sometimes I'll pull one of those out, but it needs to be sharpened. So, um, Yeah, this has been kind of an experiment, um, not only for you, but for me and, and teaching, because I've never actually had someone here in person. Um, we might actually try the kids binge next time. That might work for you. Because uh, if you haven't seen that, I made a, uh, a baby Rubo um, over there. And so that might actually be kind of fun. Uh, but next week, we'll actually be doing saws. That'll be a little easier. Came, you saw, I conquered. You came, you planed, you sawed, you conquered, yes. <laughs> uh, I don't think I have any particular questions, but uh, if you do have any questions, let there's me know. There's blue dots. There's blue dots. Well, those are the ones I already went through. Right. Like, uh, would by Sarah always, oh, right? right? That's right. <laughs> I've been keeping an eye on it. So she wants to give the Titanic a go. Don't need to go all the way down. Oh, come on. <laughs> I have to. Um, so, yeah, this has been kind of fun. Um, you want to give her a shot at the 55? No, you don't get the 55 yet. Why? <laughs> Actually, I think I have it. No, I don't have it set up for anything right now. Uh, um, the king of hand planes. Well, I'm the queen, so whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you have any ideas of things you would like to see us try, we'll probably do a couple beginner videos and go through some of the experimental of different tools and some of those <laughs> things. Um, not only will it be interesting for her, but it'll also help me in the teaching style. I'm not quite sure how I want this video footage to So when you go to, to Texas, they're not guinea pigs? Well, no, I've done in-person one-on-one before, but I've never done one-on-one -on -one with the intention of making a video. That makes it very confusing. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's why that's the reason why it's taken us so long to do this, because I want to do this back in July, but I hadn't quite figured out how to do the format for it. Um, so we'll be experimenting and playing with it. If you have any ideas, let us know. And if you have uh, really want to get a hold of me, uh, you can send me an email. I do try and respond to as many of those as possible. So, uh, Give Sarah two thumbs up. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and uh, if my wife had her size tools and bench, it would probably be a far so different thing. I'd be so better thing. than you. They can't see me because your other camera is in the way. Look at me. <laughs> there. Oh, not There's that bed. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think I'll about do it for this week. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Bye. Now i got to go over there and turn it off. So you get to watch my wife for another second or two. Unless I do this. <laughs> do the Heidi. Do the Heidi, yes. All right, see you all next time. Bye.